so I was, I was telling um, my friend here, Isaac, uh, Isaiah, that uh, when I was doing corporate events, sometimes we'd have literally a million and a half dollars worth of equipment and the wire and the stupid battery would go out while the guy was speaking. So you'd get, get, you'd get that effect, you know. So we had to learn all, so you'd say, okay, if your mic goes out, we'll have some handheld mics on the side you could pick up and if those have problems, go back to the podium. So anyhow, <clears throat> it's great to be with you today. My name is Bob Krause and I'm with United Play. And uh, well, I'm not just a provider of equipment, but a little different. I'm also an owner of a bunch of FECs. So I have a little different um, kind of opinion on, or a perspective on things than, uh, than, uh, than the average provider because I know what it takes to get to a start. Oh, I only got 24 minutes? I guess I ran out of time already, huh? Wow, okay. <laughs> um, so I wanna talk a little bit about marketing because it's one of my passions. It has been my whole life. In fact, when I did these big corporate events around the world, uh, our job was to figure out how to get 3,000 people to show up at these big corporate events. So it's a lot of work. So I really found a nice mix was I moved from that industry into the family entertainment business. And that began with, uh, I'll, I'll tell you actually a little bit about United Play for Fun that goes inside of most of the kind of adventure park places. So trampolines, um, we do soft play, warrior courses, we have uh, all kinds of other attractions, things that we've created recently that are unique to the business. And I must tell you that I'm having a blast. It's a business filled with fun and opportunity. And I don't think I'm ever gonna switch careers again. I really like doing what I'm doing. So um, let me tell you a little bit more. Uh, when I was just getting started, like you, I had just opened our first location in San Diego, where I'm from, and I went to this uh, I went to this event in Las Vegas, and one of the keynote speakers was Jerry Marola. And I'm, I, I'm not kidding, I sat there, it was like going to church for me. I'm not kidding. It was like almost, a, it's like a business spiritual experience. Because everything he said, I'm like, yes, I just wanted to say, praise the Lord, you know. But, channel, it's late night, 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jerry. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I, I love this man. He stands for everything good in the industry. This is the best event in the business. You got Frank Price back there, another just amazing man. Cheryl, who's been part of this, it's a great team. So thanks for sticking it out and being here with us today. <clears throat> um, this is the guy that I said, hey, I've got this crazy idea. Somebody asked me if I wanted to invest in some trampoline parks. Would you be interested? Sure, let's go tour. So we walked, we went into these various locations in Southern California and decided after coming back, hmm, I bet we could create something a little different. So over time, what ended up happening is I created a business plan. I said, what if we came up with something that was more than just jumping? So that's what we did. Came up with this idea and it was called uh, Uptown Jungle. We went out and raised money with friends and family. I thought it was gonna cost us 650,000 to build the first one, it cost us $875,000. So I will tell you, if you're building your budget, put a 20% contingency in it. Jerry will probably give you similar advice, maybe not that much, but you always spend more than you think. We built our park and then we opened up in May of 2014. That was our very first one. We had a blast, things took off immediately. We were a big success. And over time, we continue to grow. <clears throat> and I'll tell you a little bit more about how that all happened. But to me, where it all began, besides building an amazing park, was figuring out how are we gonna get people to our place, right? What can we do different? And so I'll share some things with you that I think are a little uh, unique to the business. Um, but let's talk about what marketing is. It's a, it's a discipline, right? It involves uh, getting, the, uh, getting every action and everything you do is to drive people to your business, right? So it's not just the marketing, it's not just the commercials, it's not, it's everything, it's how your building looks in the front, the, the experience they have when they come in. So it all begins with a plan. You gotta decide what is it that we want to accomplish? What do we wanna be known as? So just keep in mind, we're gonna talk about branding next. This is all part about building your brand, but you have to decide, hey, we're gonna put some serious money into the marketing efforts. And I find that what most, most people do, they get so excited in the building process and they're so worn out by the time they're ready to start their business that marketing can get dropped. So my advice would be start that plan early. 
And if it's not you, you should know what your kryptonite is and where your superpowers are. If marketing is not your strength, that's okay. Find somebody whose it is so they can help you build that good marketing plan. So it's also about setting goals, right? We need to know what, our, um, what it is we want to say and who we want to say it to. How do we measure our results of the things we do? You know, um, how will we accomplish it? And so we got to be realistic too, right? We say, hey, we want 100,000 people in our opening month. That may not be realistic. Um, for us in one of my 18,000 square foot parks, we hit 100,000 people in our park after about a year of being open in one month. That's pretty good. But that took a long time to get there. I'm going a little quick, and feel free to stop me along the way, but just due to the, the, the sake of time here, I want to talk a little bit about something I think is really important. I've actually built several, over my career, probably built several hundred brands uh, for different people, different businesses. Some of them never took off, right? You, you pitch them to somebody, you do all these beautiful rever uh, versions of a brand, a logo, and they go, oh, no, but we like this one, right? And so you end up with something. And let's think about what a brand is. <clears throat> you see this right here? What is this piece of metal? Anybody know what that is? Branding iron. And what is it used for? Cattle. For cattle. It's putting that brand right on it, right? <clears throat> they sear that thing hot. Psh, they know exactly who that cattle belongs to. So how do we create that same essence? How do we create a brand that's memorable, that people will enjoy being part of, they're part of the experience, and that people can become your brand ambassadors? So remember that it's not, brand loyalty doesn't happen by the first impression, although that's very important, right? But it's gonna be through those regular experiences they have over and over and over again. So I'll show you some of the brands in our industry. Anybody recognize these? Yeah, pretty well known. Most of them are bright and colorful. You'll notice uh, there's a, you know, uh, this Ultra Zone is in black with the red dot, which is perfect for laser tag. So you gotta think about the colors you use, the fonts you use. Your font can't be too small. When it's on a business card, it's gotta be printable. And the other big trend right now, I don't know if you've noticing this, but like think about Jenny Craig. It used to be Jenny Craig. What's it called now? Do you know? Jenny. Jenny, right? And everything is shrinking. Angie's list is now just Angie. The big trend now, single word names for businesses. So even though we're United Play, we now, a lot of people see us as up. Because that just is a nice acronym for what we do. <clears throat> and it's a little easier to say. So I've literally had people say, hey, we're going to have up on the line with us. And I, I love that. Even though it's not our name, it sounds fun and, and uh, lively. <clears throat> so Uptown Jungle was the brand I built. And we'll show you that a little bit. But I want to talk to you about what builds a brand experience. So here's my little poll for you. Now, which of these brands do you prefer most if you were to go get some medicine at the local store today? Would it be Rite Aid, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, Kroger? Now, I don't, I don't do you have an answer? CVS. Walgreens? CVS. CVS? Walgreens. Okay, over here? Walgreens. Walgreens. CVS, nice little mixture. Now, I would go, I would guess to determine that those brands that you mentioned were based on your, your continuous experience there, right? There could be a very good chance that there's some probably good stores where you could have a good experience at a Walgreens, I mean at a Rite Aid or even a Walmart, but it's not what we normally associate. So think about coffee as well. Does Starbucks have the best coffee? It might, but McDonald's has coffee, Denny's has coffee, the local gas station has coffee. So it really is determined on, yeah, flavor makes a difference, but it's the experience you have around it. So keep in mind that your brand essence becomes the experience they have from the moment they pull up in your parking lot. Is there trash in your parking lot? Do your front windows have nice graphics that are welcoming? When you come in, is there staff that's nice? You know, yesterday, even at the, um, at the castle, what's that, uh, what's it called? Enchanted. Yeah, Enchanted Castle. The GM was at the front, welcome us all there. I love that, right? So the human touch makes a big difference. So if, for how many of you have a business that are, that's currently open and running? Okay, so my question to you is, what are people saying about you? Now you, you can er, quickly kind of get an idea by going on Yelp, right? Looking at your Facebook account, see what kind of ratings you're getting. 
<clears throat> and Yelp, you know, let's, let's, fig, let's call it for what it is. It's kind of a complaint site, right? But if you do your business well, Yelp can be a great, great, great tool for you because people say, wow, four star, four and a half, five star? Wow, they must be doing something right. People know that that's good, right? So keep in mind as you build your brand, we want to be aware of what people are saying about you. And if you have a bad review, you know, you can reach out to these people. Say, hey, I'm so sorry. I just read this. I feel terrible about this experience you had. Could we invite you back to come with your son or your family? Let, let us just kind of make that good for you and see if you're okay to just feel a little bit better about us. And don't say, hey, change your review. Don't, that shouldn't be part of it. Your first goal is to thrill the customer, right? And then if they feel good about it, they'll delete it, change it, whatever it might be. So these are things to consider. Um, have you ever heard of, of brand ambassadors, right? Now we know our younger generation, they wear shirts with logos all over it. I do. I live in California. I'm a surfer. I have certain surf brands I like to wear. Uh, Ruka was a real popular one. I was surfing 20 foot waves in, or no, 15 foot waves in Fiji with the owner of Ruka. Um, and there's a picture of him and all the buries on the island of him dropping in a 40 foot wave in the barrel. And I said, oh, I can't believe this is you. He goes, I hate that picture. I go, why? He goes, about a second later that lip hit me and I almost drowned. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. You know, sorry for the bad memory. But to me, he was like, wow, this is the guy. And you know, he sold it for hundreds of millions of dollars. But the point being is brands are important. We wear our brands that we like, right? Shoes, socks, uh, sweaters, jackets, uh, Lululemon. When I say that, what do you feel like? Ooh, nice, right? <laughs> right? I've seen Jerry in his Lululemon shirt, uh, jacket before, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so here's some other things to remember. It's important to, uh, to know who your competition is. Because as you're getting ready to build your, your business, uh, even if you have one open, you should be very aware of what your competition does well and where they could use some help because you want to capitalize on their weaknesses. Does that make sense? So I was, uh, Frank Price, we hired, we, we, he didn't hire him. He spent an hour on the phone while I was in China with my team. We were chatting about a location we were going to do in, La, in Las Vegas. And we said, hey, we really like this place. It's in Henderson, Nevada but there's a big competition next to us. It's four times our size, a mile away. And I'll never forget, Frank's like, well, what do they do well? Well, they're bigger, they're new, they're this, blah, blah, blah. What do you guys do well? Well, we think we have great people, we have great reputation. <clears throat> and he just got us thinking about what really mattered. And we realized it didn't matter that we were smaller, but we, what mattered is the experience the customer had. And um, it's unfortunate to say, because we knew this, these, these other folks that own this other park, they're now out of business, um, which is unfortunate. And we made it through COVID and continue to thrive and do well. But a lot of it's based on the really good advice that, that Frank had given, like stick to your core principles, right? So, you know, as I meet different personalities, we, we've been around enough, we meet some of you are kind of quiet and mild mannered. Some of you are more spontaneous and outgoing, fun lo loving. But believe it or not, it takes both types of personalities and everything in between to run a good business. So um, just keep in mind that you want your sparky, happy people in the front, right? That's the first thing they're gonna see. You don't want to be in some, you know, the person who normally works the back that does inventory is really good with numbers and keeps all the books in order. Hello and welcome, you know, just quiet and looking down. You want the ones that are like, we're so glad you're here, right? Um, <clears throat> knowing your audience is also important. This is an interesting group of statistics. So if you look at the, how the industry is broken down it's with families and children, ages zero to nine, and we actually capitalize on another demographic, which is toddler, which is five and under. And there's big business there if you want that. It's just a different type of uh, integration into your park design. Nine to 12, 13 to 17, young adults and then adults. So keep in mind that facilities range in size, right? They can go from you know, as low as you know, three to 5,000 square feet and up. But all that makes a difference in your experience. So one of the things I did when we built our first park is found an 8,000 square foot location, but it had 24 foot ceilings. After I had been looking at 20 and 30,000 square foot spots, and they wanted quarter million, a quarter million dollars down payment, giant you know, uh, guarantees, I walk in, the guy goes, yeah, I'll rent it to you for 87 cents a foot per month. 
And uh, I said, what are the terms? He goes, you can pay by the month or do a year lease or whatever. I'm like, sold? Because it was my first one. I was a little nervous, right? But I had these 24 foot tall ceilings. So part of my success in creating what we did and, and, and also with United Play is I utilize a space that's way up high because a lot of people forget about that space. It's all free. Right. So keep in mind, as you're working on your design and your layout, consider what's going on 10 feet, 12, 20 feet above you. And is there stuff we can do there? You know, build a, we build a mezzanine out of soft play steel with an with a almost 80 foot long uh, inflatable obstacle course on the top of it. Great use of space and uh, cost me nothing to, to grab that extra square footage. So keep in mind, you've got to know what you're into. What are the things you do? You've heard all this discussion over the last few days by these wonderful sponsors of this event. Hopefully you've ga gathered a ton of data that's been real valuable. But as, we, as I grew this brand, Uptown Jungle, um, it was our job to try to make sure that our culture met our, our kind of our logo and our look and feel, right? So it was kind of an indoor playground cityscape. So we had buildings. I built the first skyscraper ever. I went to IAPA after my first year. And we had a 24 foot tall skyscraper that looked like the one that was used in when Batman and Robin would climb up the buildings. Because when I was a child, my mom said, I would run around yelling, bat, bat. I didn't know how to say Batman. Just run around, bat, bat, you know. And, um, but I love that. And I built that. That was my first iconic piece of our first design. And so as you also develop your brand, what are some of the things you can put inside of your facility that are a marquee of what you do? And I always like to say when I design, <clears throat> I would love to get your personal DNA involved in the design. So I met with a couple here, um, and so did Dan. We, we met with them, and, and, um, and they have kind of a park, outdoor theme type idea. So we're going, hey, let's figure out how we can make that work and tie that into the theme, because there's nothing better than creating something when you feel like, yeah, that's mine. I did that. This is my place, right? So look to good consultants, good designers to help you, but we definitely want to have you involved in that good design. So right now we have eight locations. We're building our ninth in Arizona and we're looking to expand. So it's been a fun journey for us as we're expanding and I have a team. We have over 400 plus employees. Uh, I have a whole team that, uh, that over the years I've hired that now runs that part of the business. We did a tour last time we were in Arizona. But it's a lot of work and it's not easy. So let's talk about what it means to figure out, you heard earlier, uh, um, Frank talked about it, right? Understanding your demographics and your persona, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But we, we need to, you need to know kind of what your percentage of demographic is. Is it children, young children, teenagers? Uh, you know, people build trampoline parks, they're thinking they're gonna get a lot of older, young, like teenagers and young adults coming there, and they will on certain occasions, but you know what they're being really inhabited by? six-year-old to 11-year-old kids. Those are the ones that dominate those parks right now. That's kind of the growing trend. Um, and we're just finishing one in Oklahoma right now, and it's got, oh, it's amazing. 40,000 square foot, we got two more days to finish it up. But um, we've even got a mezzanine up above with 3,000 square feet where the adults can go up and have beer and wine and watch the kids from above, and we built a spiral slide from that level for them to come down and play with the kids. So, you know, we really try to think through the whole design of what's going on based on the demographics. So if we know we got kids there, parents are gonna be there, let's feed them, let's keep them around. Um, so in this case, let's say you got a, a mother who's got kids between the ages of five and 11. Okay, we understand that. Younger demographic. So what is their, how much are they gonna, what's the percentage of people in those different demographic ages? And what's their average spend gonna be, right? So you wanna know the per cap spend. And these are some neat things you can do. Once you open, you can say, okay, we had, oh, let's just use your numbers, 100, 100 people in the park today, you know, we did X, Y, Z in sales. Hey, our average um, revenue per person was $19.22. You can now use as a, as a marker to say, hey, let's work in our per cap boost and find little ways that we can enhance sales at the front desk at different places and see if we can get that to $20 and, 85 cents or whatever it might be, right? So there's some neat things you can do by little challenges and competitions within your park. This persona though is very important. This was one of many personas or three or four that would come to my location, right? So let's just think about it. In this case, we've got a mother um, who, uh, who is, 
educated. We want to know her interests or where she lives. We want to know what kind of income they have because this makes a difference. So in this case, Jenna, 32-year-old mother, stay-at-home mom. She's busy raising active kids and her seven-year-old daughter is into dance. Her four-year-old likes preschool and loves to uh, do gymnastics. But Jenna never pays full price. She's a bargain shopper. And um, we also know that they live on a pretty modest income. They decided to live on her husband's income only. So she's bargain shopping, looks for good deals, but wants to keep her kids active. So how do you market to Jenna? That may be a little different than another group that just shows up and they're ready to just throw the money down and do whatever is necessary, right? So these are things you gotta be aware of. And in a typical scenario, you'll have at least three to four personas that you should clearly identify. And for the sake of time today, we don't have the time to get into that. But you do want to know where they live. You want to know their zip code, how far it takes to travel. And I realize that distance is kind of relevant based on where you live. Um, parts of Arizona, you may say we're only five miles away, but the way the roads are set up, it takes 20 minutes to get there or longer. Um, in some cases, rural country, they'll say, hey, you know, it's, everything is a 45 minute drive away, right? I'm doing this big thing in Oklahoma right now. It's interesting. You get a little city of near Tulsa where we're at in Owasso. You get out and it's just open country. So everyone's used to driving 30, 40 minutes to go somewhere fun. As long as you're aware of that, because then you also need to know where you're going to do your target marketing. If you're doing, um, you're doing, um, you know, geo um, centric uh, marketing where you're saying we want to target these zip codes, these types of people with Facebook through social media and so forth. It's important to know that. <clears throat> and then it's also important to understand clearly what your offerings are. And, and what I say by that is, of course, you know your offerings, but how are you going to promote them, right? So in this case, we've got uh, different uh, attractions, bumper cars, food, laser tag, so forth. But you want to make sure that your message is clear on what the things that you really promote. So yesterday we went to this fun venue, right? And they're promoting Wally. Uh, 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 what was it again? Whirly ball. ball. And I thought it was interesting that the name was based off the two Whirly Ball tracks when in reality there was so much more to do in there. But that was their kind of their brand essence. And you know, it's like Whirly Ball, what's that? It's definitely a memorable brand. Once you're in there, you enjoy that experience. So in this case, with Big Thrill Factory, a, a great company does a really nice job promoting, you know clearly what they're doing, right? They show all the different things. You know exactly when you see this, there's no guessing as to what those attractions look like. It was a UFO. Oops, okay. Um, um, so um, with that being said, you just keep in mind that it's not just the visual images, but the video that goes with it, right? So I'm gonna show you a quick little video for a trampoline park that I think is real brilliant, very catchy, uh, definitely had a nice social sizzle to it and got some good social media. It was a UFO, I'm serious. We're gonna get it good. Right up there. Yeah, Bob. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, this. Look at. Turn it down. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Are you okay, man? How did you get up there? <laughs> I gotta do that again. <laughs> what do you mean do that again? I'm going back to rise. There you go. Right? Fun, catchy, something different. You know it's not real, but what a joy to watch, right? I will tell you that today you can find young kids in high school and college age probably for $500 who would easily do that kind of video. Probably the most expensive thing was that special effect of the green thing coming down. And, uh, but the world's changing in the world of marketing. So unlike the days when I first started in marketing, we had to make phototyping of every logo. You picked your font and went to a machine and shot, a, a, shot an image down onto white film and you'd have your different text. You would take the text, cut them out with, with, a, with a Sharpie and lay it on the thing and that's how you laid out your brochure back in the 70s. That's how I did it back then. I, used to, I remember when audio was all on, you know, reel-to-reel -reel tape, all these things. Today, technology is evolving so quickly, video production is becoming cheaper. You can even outsource people who would do a special effects like that somewhere in India for maybe three or four hundred dollars overlay and create that effect. 
So this is where I'm getting at. You're, there's things going on in the, in the world of uh, marketing that's changing. One of the other big things we need to be aware of is it's not just the things you do, but how much can you spend? So part of your good marketing plan is to clearly understand what your budget is. In fact, if you're building a pro forma in advance, right now, I, I, one of the couples we met with, you know, they've got their business plan done. They started, they've, she's done five revisions of it. But a pro forma says, this is how much money we're gonna spend before we open. Here's how much money we're gonna take in. Here's how much money we're gonna generate for you know, the business and for investors or whatever, right? Part of that is your marketing budget. You gotta clearly know how much you're willing to spend and I will tell you that I find that you want to spend a good significant amount on that first month to three months. You want to get the word out. And that's how people begin to know about you. So it's everything from web design, SEO, content development, print, social media, comes in all different forms. And, but you know, I would say for somewhere in that 25 to as much as $50,000 over the first three months is a good spend and you'll get plenty of traction. Um, print is out, social media is where everything's at. I would tell you, limit your print just for stuff in the parks. People can take, take things home, maybe an article in a newspaper, but I'll show you a few other things here. So keep in mind that social media, website, mobile marketing, all these things are different ways to promote your business, right? Um, even the deal site, Groupon, a lot of people hate Groupon. I was telling a, a group earlier, if you run Groupon, I ran Groupon in one of our parks and um, in the first three days, I had 25,000 unique views to our website, and I had only been averaging seven to 12 a day. And 25,000 people visit my website because we were on Groupon. And my lowest fee to pay Google for that pay-per-click at that time was 49 cents. So imagine if I had, what it take to have 25,000 views at 49 cents, what that would have cost me, right? There's some benefits there, I will tell you. And not only that, but Groupon, uh, like 40% of them are never claimed. So that's something else to keep in mind. It's a great way to drive business, just don't do it as a regular ongoing thing. Content will be king, right? Your photos, the images, the things that people post. As, my, as our brand expanded with Uptown Jungle and even United Play, we're finding there's a lot of images from people that are not even, we don't even know who they are. They're just posting cool things about the things we do. And that makes even better, more uh, believable content, right? So keep in mind that you want people coming to your place. One of the things we did is on a, uh, right before the week before grand opening, we had, I had three nights. I brought in like up to 50 moms with their kids that were custom, that were invited online and through the social rings we had out there. Bring your children. We fed them pizza when they came in. We gave them a tour of the park. And then we said that all the kids can play for 45 minutes, but every mom must have their phone open, right? So they just shot tons of video. And on the way out, they all got a t-shirt, Uptown Jungle, and they also got tattoos that said, Uptown Jungle opening May 24th. And they had, we had pictures the next day, kids had these tattoos all over themselves. So fun things to do. We did three, ro three nights of that and just had unbelievable um, social media blaring everywhere. Cost us very little. So I talked about earlier, there are all kinds of websites. These are some of the ones, maybe take a picture of this if you ever want to reference, because these are some of the sites you can get good graphics done for a very low price. Some, um, some you can buy pre-made, some of them are gonna be sites where you like this one, or, or I'm sorry, like um, Upwork, a freelancer, Fiverr, you can hire people individually to do specific things for you at a very low cost. Fiverr started their whole website based on, we'll do anything for five bucks. And uh, that's gone up. There's still stuff for five bucks, but you'd be blown away what you can get for five dollars online. <laughs> you want your logo in a 3D block spinning around in outer space in high definition? You can find guys that have it for five bucks. They'll do it for you. So keep in mind, going social is a big part of this, right? And I would tell you this is where you should be spending the money. So I would get influencers into your park. These are people who already have a base of followers, people who know what's going on. Uh, you can do social events where you have an influencer night. Invite them into your park. I guarantee there's yeah. one, and even in small towns, there are influencers. Invite them in, host them for a night of fun. Just, just get, get everybody in. Call your local news channel. Put out an invitation to every news reporter. Say, come in for free. We just want you to come have fun. No strings attached, and the word will start spreading. Um, Inside sales is a big part of business, right? We are, we've chatted about that earlier with Cheryl. I don't want to get into that. But keep in mind that's a big part of it, working with churches and different organizations. Outside sales, 
um, will also be a big part of this. Keep in mind that, I, whoops, I had that inverted. Inside is what happens in the park. The inside of the things are gonna be like when they come to the front desk. Did you know we're having a special today that you can get a family four pack for this price includes pizza, drinks, and like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, would you like to do that? Sure. Or would you like to buy a gift card today? If you buy today, you'll get free entrance and you buy a gift, four gift cards and you get the upsell, right? And then you find that 40, 50% of those people use those gift cards. So also working with charities, there's things you can do where you can incentivize the youth and schools and other organizations. If they do good things, they can come in and get an hour of free play in your park. So there's some really cool things you can do to motivate your you know, people around you. And uh, that's about it for me today. But I do want to just say one last thing. This, you are ready for the ride of your life in this business. This is a great industry. Everybody here loves people. You're here because you love people. You want to have fun, do something great. So I just want to, I want to commend you for taking the time to hang out, to be here, to be educated, because this single event will get you on the road, on the road to a great success in the future. And I look forward to uh, being part of that and seeing you guys fly off to the next big thing in your life. So thanks for your time. Thank you, Bob.